Are you confused about which of the Affinity programs is right for you? Well, you're in luck because today we're going to be discussing the differences between the three of them and which one might be right for you, or maybe if you should go with all three. The Affinity programs are awesome professional level design programs, and what makes them even more awesome is how cheap they are compared to the Adobe programs that do essentially the same things. Without a subscription, Affinity can just be a lot cheaper, but some people get confused about which of the three Affinity programs is the right one for them. So today we're going to talk about what each of the Affinity programs is for, what types of projects it can be used for, and what type of people would be interested in each one of them so that you can make the decision about which one is right for you or if you need to get all three. First up, let's talk about my boy, the OG Affinity program, Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer was the first Affinity program to come out, and it has been absolutely incredible. It's a vector graphics editor, which means that it works in the vector format, which is infinitely scalable. And it is great for doing things like designing logos, making icons, designing something like a t-shirt or a poster, something like what's on my hat here would be made in something like Affinity Designer. It's the equivalent of Adobe Illustrator, if you're into really expensive bloatware, or Inkscape, if you're into open source. So you want to think about that. If those are programs you've used before, or Affinity Designer might be the program for you. Basically, if you're a graphic designer, Affinity Designer is going to be a must-have program. Next up, let's look at the most popular guy, Affinity Photo. Why is he the most popular, you ask? Well, because he's almost exactly like Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Photoshop is Adobe's most popular program. So there's just a lot more people online searching alternatives to Adobe Photoshop than there are searching something like alternatives to Adobe Illustrator. So Affinity Photo is really about working with raster graphics. Anything that's based on pixels rather than on vectors is what you want to be working with in Affinity Photo. So if you want to do photo compositions or photo merges or anything like that, Affinity Photo is going to be right for you. It will have everything that you would expect out of a professional level photo composition app. Things like layers and masks and effects are all going to be there. And the great thing about Affinity Photo is it even has like live effects so that those can be altered on the fly as you go through. It's really an immensely powerful program and it even has a raw photo developer so you can develop your raw photos in it. But I just want to clarify, this is not a replacement to Adobe Lightroom. It is not a batch photo editor and it's not a photo organizer. You edit one photo at a time. So it's really when you want to really invest the time into that photo or if you're creating something like a composition. It also can only do basically just one page at a time. And so it's not something where you would do long form documents. Think of it like this. You might do a magazine ad in Affinity Photo, but you won't create the entire magazine in Affinity Photo. Which brings us to our next point, the new kid on the block, Affinity Publisher. Now, Affinity Publisher is the newest. It hasn't been out for all that long, but it is a really powerful app, and it's personally my favorite app. We'll get to that in a minute. But first off, Affinity Publisher is actually a desktop publishing app. This is very similar to Adobe InDesign, which is kind of the often forgotten application. Or on the open source side, it's like Scribus. So this is where you're going to do things like put together a whole document, like that magazine I was talking about earlier, or a newspaper. You might make a movie poster in here by bringing in things from Photo and Designer. It's really where things come together like that. I like to think of desktop publishing apps as being where you bring together your words, your graphics, and your photos all together to create your packaged piece, which is why Affinity Publisher is such a great thing to have. But Affinity Publisher also has a superpower, which makes it an amazing application, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, this is where I would insert sponsor if I had a sponsor, but as you know, I don't have that many subscribers, so I don't have a sponsor yet. But I do want to take this moment to tell you actually that this video is not sponsored. I have no relationship with Affinity or their parent company, Serif, and they haven't paid me to make any of these videos or given me any kind of compensation. I just create these videos so that I can help designers like you become more effective in their work. But I will take this moment to be the sponsor of my own video, and that is to tell you about my courses on Skillshare. If you want to become a better designer and learn any of these applications, like the Affinity programs or other alternative apps, you can check out my Skillshare courses, which are linked in the description to this video. If you click through on those links, you can get a two-month free trial to Skillshare, and you can learn all kinds of things. You don't have to just watch my videos. You can watch anybody's videos, and you can really take your design to the next level. So go ahead, take a moment, and check those out. Now we'll get back to the video. So that's the overview, and hopefully you know which app would be best for you now. As you think about it, do you need to do more of that vector, more of that graphic work or illustration? Do you need to do more with photos, or are you putting things together to create finished documents? 
That's the choice that you have to make. But I also think that you should consider getting all three apps, and here's why. It's called Studio Link. Now, I have a whole video all about Studio Link, which I'll link to here, and you can check that out. But basically, what it does is it brings all of the power of Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo into Affinity Publisher as long as you own all three applications. You have all three of them, you run all three of them on your computer, and you can work just in Affinity Publisher. You can access all of those other things just from inside that interface, which makes it super powerful when you're trying to work on anything because you have all of the tools available to you right when you need them. So I actually do almost all my work now in Affinity Publisher, but I'm using tools from all three of the programs all the time. And remember, each of these applications just costs $50, and you can often find them on sale if Affinity has just won an award or released a new version. They'll often put them on sale for 20 to 30% off, so you can get them even cheaper than that. So my recommendation would be to just get all three of them because it's only going to cost $150, which is almost nothing compared to the price that you would be paying for Adobe with their long subscription model, where you just keep paying month after month after month. This, you pay $150 and you're done. You got the whole thing and your workflow will be so much faster. Now, if you don't have $150 right now, then choose the one that's best for you, buy that one, and maybe then when you get $50 later down the road, you can purchase another one of those applications or maybe when it goes on sale, then you can purchase it. But get the one that's right for you right now or if you have the money, consider getting all three of them, which will just make you more effective in your work. So there you have it, folks. The breakdown between Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher. But now it's your turn. Go ahead and drop into the comments and let me know which of these programs you use or which you plan to use and for what kinds of projects you're going to use them for. Have I missed something? Is there something else that I should talk about in these videos? Let me know in the comments below. All right, we'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.